Allora siamo tornati su questo podcast con Mike e Matt che non capiranno niente di quello che sto dicendo però sono molto felice di esserci e ora guarda la faccia di me Have you ever crashed a wedding? No, but that's why I want to know how you would feel. The, and what I think is that I wouldn't know someone was crashing my wedding because if I didn't recognize who that was, I would assume it was one of Patricia's friends that right. I just had never met. But well, that's why I think wedding crashing works. Like That's why I feel like more than anything else, it's easy to crash a wedding. It's easier to do it because of the fact that you... Always, everyone's assuming that they just don't know that person right unless it's like a 50 to 70 person wedding but when we're talking like 150 to 200 people there's no way you know everyone like maybe someone's plus one you know what i mean you're a friend with his girlfriend who you've never met true you got to have a really great story about who you know like you know or it's like the movie wedding crashers where you just say oh i'm i'm aunt, aunt, liz's, aunt, aunt liz's son aunt liz's yeah. son and no one everyone's gonna assume someone has an aunt liz yeah. i have an aunt liz do you really yeah when they said it in the movie i was like wow that's kind of sick <laughs> do you have an aunt Susie? no no oh, i always feel like everybody has an aunt Susie. maybe where you're from <laughs> <laughs> um wait where do you have you ever crashed a wedding no i, I get invited to too many that i, I don't even I'm I'm saying who's gonna crash? I would crash like if like I found out you know Leonardo DiCaprio was getting married. I'd well, try I to crash no that. my thing with crashing a wedding. I mean I don't think I would ever do it. Also just because I feel bad and I know how much goes into a wedding and like you know it's like every person is like 150 bucks or whatever. So right. I just like feel bad. But for me it'd be like more so like if I am somewhere and you like walk past like a venue or like a hotel and like something is going on. Yes. Then I'd be like mm, I would take a little peek in here. But what are the odds you're gonna be dressed? to crash a wedding if you're like walking by a hotel when you're on vacation you i could whip something together yeah <laughs> i could whip something well, together I... if the, the only time i would crash a wedding is if i was staying at a hotel in the middle of nowhere and there wasn't much going on nightlife wise in the town i was at and down in the ballrooms at the hotel there was a wedding and the wedding was like in the last hour or two yeah. where no I one agree. is gonna like like imagine you're like in uh, like a tropical place or something. I feel like people always do that shit. Like I w I'd say Hawaii, but like that's probably a bad example. But like you're in your hotel, you're probably dressed in a cute dress because you're going to dinner. Yeah. And then you see there's a wedding going on and like yeah. the DJ's playing. People are just dancing. The dinner's over. It's just like the dancing part. You're not going to go to an assigned seat that doesn't exist for you. No, I'm not going to sit down. I'm just going to yeah. go to the bar, get myself a little drink. <laughs> And then go to the dance floor. What's Maybe it? meet my husband. That's a great story. There you go. Oh. And what's also, I love the idea of crashing like conferences. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, do I've done that once. What, what did you crash? <laughs> it's going to uh, be the nerdiest thing ever. We crashed a Narcotics Anonymous like celebratory event. What? Oh, wait, like in Hunter, like in a Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? Kind like, of. A it was like a, like a, whatever they call it, when you celebrate the one year or whatever. It was like a Narcotics Anonymous uh, graduation ceremony okay. we were it was like that we were, sounds like not fun at all it wasn't but we didn't know what it was until we got in there but we were like looking for something to do we heard music playing from like this convention center we we're like what is going on in there <laughs> and then we like peeked inside we saw like people were looked like they were partying and then we walked in and it's just like people you know struggling to like get their vibe going oh my god because there's no drinks there's no nothing and it's just a bunch of people like kind of like <laughs> dancing like this Stop. and we were fucking wasted we're like what's going on here like oh it's narcotics anonymous congratulate and like they were talking to us like we were part and they're just worse. smelling you were alcohol in your breath <laughs> they're like you cheated you, yeah. you don't deserve to be at this graduation and they were playing rihanna's we found love in a hopeless place and we were like oh <laughs> great banger not for us <laughs> Have you ever gone out of your way to like sneak into a club or get yourself into a function? Like when Absolutely. I was in college, sometimes I would try to Google the owner of a bar. Brilliant. And I would go up to the front and ask if that owner was working. So and smart. And they're like, yo, like, hey, is Jerry here tonight? They're like, no, he's not. He's like, how do you know Jerry? I'm like, I go way back with him. He said I could come in with like a few friends tonight. Is that cool? And sometimes they would let me in. But that's you, honestly a really good move. Hey, to Google the owner I, of the I, I yeah. do that, but not like I'll just like exaggerate. Like I will have met someone. And then you just use that name, even if you're not that friends. But I've never like fully just Googled someone and gone, is that smart? Sometimes you can really find the information. And also lately, I've been having to like write down 
the people who are like bouncers at places because mm-hmm. like sometimes I have great connections with them and they remember me, but I always forget their name. Yeah. So now I'm like having to like write it but down. You're really good with the, oh, it's so good to see you, buddy. Yeah, pal. All right, bud. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're pretty good at throwing those around. Yeah. That is a, a southern good accent on it. Uh, My other thing that I used to do, like I feel like more so in New York, I've done it a couple of times is when you go to an event that there's a list for. Okay. And most likely it's always just like a girl with the list in front of her. It's like, oh, name. And you just look, see the first, and you say the name that you see. Oh. And it always. For ID? A lot of times they don't. Or you're getting ID checked before and then you're getting, the, you know what I mean? Oh, now I yeah. will say I do think that now it, they now check ID with name at more, yeah. a lot of events. But I feel like for some reason there was a lot of stuff that I had gone to that that was the case. Or it would be like maybe like, Say I was on the list or I was with a friend who was on the list and they weren't. I would just like be like, oh, mine. And then I'd see my name and then I'd just read another name and then say that. I, because the thing is, the reason why it works and I don't feel too terrible because when that person does arrive and, and they they're like, oh, you're already ID. here. But they're like, oh, it's me. Yeah. And it's like, OK, so I'm not like Taking getting someone's spot. No, I'm not taking their spot. They're going to get in. Have you ever had to work an event and like turn people away at something? Those kind of yes. conversa- like conversations so I can't handle. Like once I know I'm in, I am just like I can't even look around to see someone who like can't, can't get, get in, in. to oh, the yeah. event. Like I, w- I wouldn't leave a friend behind, but just hearing the conversation of someone not being oh, able it- to get into something, I just makes like me when cringe. we go to like a Paramount event and like we get in, Matt's just like, okay, just go. You just get inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know I'm the opposite. I get so stressed out, and then I like wait there to make sure everyone gets in, and then if they don't, I'm like, oh, please, whatever. But it's yeah. e- I think it's easier also for girls in general to get into events like guys. If you get in, it's like, OK, you just got to fucking every Book man it. for himself. Yeah, yeah. But like yeah, girls true. can kind of like, well, it's like three girls. Come on. It's me and my friend. Like, yeah. Um, looking at a list is a brilliant idea. Looking at a list is great. If there's a list, if not, I'm trying to think. I mean, I'm pretty good at finagling my way places. I'll also I mean, again, this is such a dumb thing. But like, if you're just nice. Yeah. To the bouncer. Like, I see so many people be so mean. And I'm like, where do you think you're going with this? Yeah. Like, how do you think this is going to get you in? <laughs> it's like, not. I don't understand it. Like, when you're at the front of a line and they're like, being mean to the guy or being like, come on, what the hell, bro? Like, you let that name in. And I'm like, D- he's just going to tell you to fuck off. Worked. Yeah. Like, when like NBA players yell at the refs, like, you know what? He's going to overchange yeah. his call because exactly. you screamed at him. Absolutely not. Yeah, usually they, they let the most patient guy in. Yeah. It's Whoever's the same relaxed. thing with bartenders. They don't like the person who's like throwing out their cast, trying to wave yeah, at them, exactly. handing out their you card. Have for bartenders, I am invisible to bartenders. I will go up to any <laughs> bar I've ever been up to and I'm... <laughs> i i will be waiting there for 40 minutes and then i you'll come up hey boss what's going on yell to two mandela and then i'm just like okay i'm all so this is my move what it's not move? really a move it's a test of patience i sit there and i just l- keep looking at their faces with a like casual light smile like i'm totally patient card out. but i'm waiting for one of them to look me in the eye card is sometimes no. yeah I if do that you too. are talking to someone and looking at someone you've already missed the opportunity because they're they're trying to make eye contact with whoever wants Whoever is ready to go, but then buy that awkward thing. Like, or if you're with someone and they're trying to talk to you, do you be like, "Hey, I need to get the bartender." Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I, I just... do that too. Like if someone's talking, I'm like, "Just wait. Like, let's just get this drink and then we can talk." Hmm. Because if you're talking and it's like they don't give a fuck, I always do the same thing. I'm like, "You be patient, be nice, but like try and make eye contact and then be ready." Yeah. And that's what I always get mad at my friends at because well, I'll be at the bar, but okay, we're ready. And then I get there, I'm like, okay, we want, what do you guys want? They're like, oh, uh, uh, okay. and I'm like, fucking make a decision. <laughs> Let's do it now. Yeah, you have to know what you want when the bartender is ready for you. Like, I don't know, like, do you guys have a, I'm like, shut up, just fucking get a vodka soda. Do you have Dory Sour? <laughs> like, dude, no. No. Uh, do, oh, what is your go-to drink when you are out and about? Uh, if I have to have a cocktail, recently, a dirty martini, filthy martini Ooh. is my go-to. I, this is a very, very recent thing, though. With vodka. I, with vodka. Okay. And I've just found that, like, the filthy, basically olive juice, um, if not a um, Moscow meal. Oh, but do they have to serve it up to you in the copper? No, I actually hate cup. when they serve it in the copper cup. Oh, okay. Like, depending on where I am. If I'm at a bar sitting down, like, you know, or, like, at a cocktail bar or something, fine. But if I'm at, like, a bar where we're standing and dancing, I don't want to be holding a copper mug. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. You need, and like, it's some... much colder. Yeah. So I hate holding taste it. the metal sometimes, or is that just me being insane? You definitely need a straw for that. But, like, if, like no, the drink... No, but they don't give you the straw. Doesn't the drink, like, absorb the taste of the copper when you're... I, I, I think that's the point of it. 
I think it has like a different type of. Is it a copper lining as well inside of it? I think it's like like more. They always seem dirty too. Like they feel like they're never clean. They're always a little rusty. Sometimes they taste so damn good. (laughs) Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like if I'm at a. Like if I'm chilling and we're just having a cocktail, love. Do you have a drink that you now. Uh, for the people who don't know, you've been doing a lot of DJ sets lately. Yes. Do you have? Do you drink and DJ at the same time, or you uh, like to when I not DJ, drink? I, I'll mostly have like a beer, like a Modelo. Okay. Or like a Moscow Mule, but it will last me basically the whole thing. But you're getting up there pretty clear headed. You're not ripping. Yeah, but I mean, you, you guys also know me. I'm never like fucked up. Yeah, you don't get. I don't really up. get that much that drunk, anyways. Mm. I definitely will want something in me before I go up, just like for confidence and like you know, just to be. A bit more energetic but i also will say the thing that i do a lot is i drink wine Ooh. and i drink but i drink wine every night very european it, and, it pairs well with like selecting tunes like after yeah. you've like had a few glasses no, of but, wine that's when you want to start taking over the ox chord exactly. at all You're like who's on ox let me i got some tunes <laughs> exactly. i have uh on my sleeve like i'm not dj i'm not drinking wine while i'm djing but i'll have like possibly if it's an event or something i'll have a glass of wine at home or i'll have a glass of wine there before i start and then i'll have a cocktail or like a beer while i'm doing it but like, there's nothing better than wine for me. You also do a, a big glass of wine before a date too. You can't. Yep. You're always just like, I have to have my glass of wine before the date. I have to. And then yeah. so brush your teeth after. The I know that's the part that sucks. But um, yeah, you can't. If you brush your teeth anywhere close to drinking wine, it's the most disgusting thing. Yeah. Ever. yeah. Most things are not good after brushing no. your teeth. No. But I also only drink red wine mostly. I never drink white wine. Maybe a rosé occasionally. But it's become. It's not. A, I don't think it's a problem by any means. Also, again, I grew up in Rome, so you know it's more culture. But I drink wine every night. Why don't they make toothpaste that doesn't taste like anything? I've been looking for this for years. Because then it would... Like the, the mint like is the standard, it's artificial flavor. The standard like baking soda toothpaste, I still think doesn't taste like anything. They, it that tastes does like exist. nothing. Because I'm pretty the mint sure. is like an artificial mint flavor that they just put into every single there toothpaste. There definitely is. Yeah, like the the baking, the one that like has the old packaging or something. Yeah, it's like the most baseline that has no mint. The most sensitive type mouths. It's yeah, it's like the the oldest recipe for. I feel like toothpaste. people would be brushing their teeth way more if it didn't ruin your. No, entire I disagree feeling. because I feel like I wouldn't feel fresh if it didn't taste minty. <sighs> But like, wouldn't I feel like I'd brush my teeth like before and after every meal if I if I didn't know I was gonna have this intense blast of Arctic mid, winter mint fresh. I know what you. Sometimes <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not in the mood for yeah, like the yeah, mint. I, I just want it to feel cl- yeah. clean. I just don't want to taste it. But sometimes you think that the mintiness means that it's now clean. right. But that's just bullshit. But then marketing. again, sometimes it's brushing your teeth is good because like it's like if I, once I brush my teeth at night, I'm done. No more snacks. Anymore. Yeah. No more drinks. No more yeah. nothing. Yeah, but if I were to be able to do that, I don't know what happened. One time in college, uh, we went to, we were just like looking around for a place to go, and there's all these clubs in New York, and we saw there wasn't a line at this one club, but we knew that it was like popping off, and so this was we were in college. We Googled who played Madison Square Garden that night. It was the band Phoenix for, with the band like 1901. I think I've told you this story. Yeah. You know the band Phoenix? Yeah. Bunch of French guys. White Listomania. Guys. Yeah. Listomania. So well, one of them's married to Sofia Coppola, right? They, I think so. Yeah. They played MSG that night and we're like, we're just going to go say that we're Phoenix. No one fucking knows who they look like. And we're just not going to speak. One guy will be the manager. We picked the tallest guy. He walked up to the bouncer and it was like, hey, these guys just play Madison Square Garden. They're Phoenix. Pulled up the Wikipedia, pulled up the concert poster. He's like, they're just looking for a table, just looking to try and, you know, get in. And he looked at us and goes, yeah, so we'll play, what? and we're just like pretending to be French. And he's like, you buy, <laughs> you buying a table? We're like, yeah, we'll get a table inside. Go inside, didn't buy a table and walked into Phoenix. Wow. Yeah. That was a they all like about a bunch of white Jewish guys. Like, how I did mean, you pass for do, that? Would you know who Phoenix looks like? No, no. If you were a bouncer at a club and some like tall guy is like really confident, well, Wikipedia like, page are you showing them? You or are you photoshopped picture of you guys? No, no. I, I think, think it was still. It was probably like 2008. Like, yeah, people's, it was early, people's yeah. internet wasn't that quick yeah, on their phone. Yeah. They realized they would have to wait a bit. Yeah, it was like Google. Pre, it was pre Instagram. That's was really like 2008, funny. 2009. Yeah. I've that, also heard that works. Uh, if you're the band Slipknot, but you just wear the masks, <laughs> and no, <laughs> and everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's Slipknot. You just go as the Jabberwockies. <laughs> there you go. Oh, they were on America's Got Talent. Yeah, yeah, the Jabberwockies. Oh, but then they're going to definitely want to see you tear up that dance floor. <laughs> yeah. Imagine Jabberwockies <laughs> going to a club and not dancing. Just like sipping. Like, that what a rip really off. sad. <laughs> what club was it? I can't remember. Ugh. I would never. I mean, some one of my friends probably remember. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Rocket Money. I've been using Rocket Money for uh, almost a year now. And I, every time I open it up, I just feel so much better, more informed about where my finances are, what I'm spending, 
where I'm saving, what subscriptions I have that maybe I forgot about. And uh, it truly has been a game changer for me in managing my finances. Because a lot of people don't realize how much their subscriptions cost. And sometimes you'll sign up to maybe watch a show 30 days, get a free trial, and then it renews. And there's just so many things in this busy world. And Rocket Money really helps you zero in on where you're spending your money, how you're spending your money. It's just so convenient to have it all in one app. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they have forgotten about, and chances are you're one of them. You might have signed up to watch a show for a month, had a 30-day trial, but they got your credit card and now they're charging every month there's so many trials and things that people have subscribed to that they just forgot about but rocket money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you you could just hit cancel and rocket money will cancel it for you it's that easy rocket money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and get alerted if anything looks off there's over 3 million people that have used Rocket Money, and they save the average person up to $720 a year. So stop throwing money away, cancel your unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash hoot. That's rocketmoney.com slash hoot. Once again, rocketmoney.com slash hoot. And now back to the episode. This isn't how I got into a place, but once I was at a club, and same thing, I was in college. I was definitely underage. Um, but I was I, with a bunch of friends of mine and this, I can see this group of people like I was like near the bathroom and they're like whispering and whispering they're like staring at me and I was like what the fuck is going on and then I hear the guy go it's MIA God it's MIA and I was like no fucking way these people think I'm MIA <laughs> wow. so, so I played into it I believe it did you have like glasses on or were you just like I don't think I don't remember what I was wearing I mean I've gotten that I look like MIA before but like mostly like pictures or something but I was in a club I was also probably like 20 19 mm, yeah. like am i it's like 45 and <laughs> i was like sure whatever they'll just apply their own exactly but it was like it. dark it was a club it was also like a cool club so like maybe they would assume that like she might be there so i kind of played into it you and british accent yep i put on my british accent wow. but i just started talking to my friends that's like, like, democracy i said democracy like we should probably leave soon you know like i can i don't know so i started talking like that and as i'm walking out they're like Hey, am I? And I was like, hi, babe. Sorry. And then I just go on <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> and I remember leaving. And I was like, that was lit. That's really good. <laughs> Have you ever been mistaken as someone All uh, famous? Who? I get, I get. But, now it's Jack Antonoff. Yeah, Jack Wait, Antonoff, but, like, 100%. I'm talking about someone like in public being like, yes, Jack. When I, I went to the Walgreens here with a mask on. That they makes COVID. it, but that makes it even more like it could. And be. I had the the black glasses, and I'm wearing a mask. And the guy goes, "I'm a big fan." I'm like, "Oh wow, he watches the podcast, cool." <laughs> and I'm like, "Thanks, man." He goes, "Yeah, dude, I just can't believe you produced that album." I was like, "Get out! Who do you think I am?" <laughs> he goes, "You're Jack Antonoff. Congrats on the Grammy." And I was like, "I'm not Jack Antonoff." And he goes, <laughs> "He goes, all right, bro. That'd be pretty cool if you were, though. But we'll just pretend you're not." And I'm like, "Dude, if I was Jack Antonoff, I would tell you I'm not Jack Antonoff." And he didn't believe me, and he's like, "All right, have a good day, Jack." And That's like refused so to believe funny. it. <laughs> yeah. Very funny. Yeah. I one time got stopped at this is the most insignificant like celebrity. I got stopped at South by Southwest uh by somebody and they thought I was the the singer George Ezra. Do you know who that is? He sings that song, My House in Budapest. <laughs> oh no, no, My no, Hidden no, Treasure no, Chest. No, no. And he came up to you and was like, I love your I love your stuff. Yeah, they really thought I was George Ezra. Did you play into it or you said I'm not George Ezra? Uh, but they were like they they were really like uh really? like it broke their heart. Didn't some woman actress, older woman, also come up to you one time and was like, Oh my god, I haven't seen you in forever? Fran Drescher. Yeah. Fran Drescher, the, the nanny. nanny. Do you know the yeah, nanny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She grabbed my hand and was like, It's so good to see you. How have you been? Like, <laughs> it's been forever. <laughs> And and Patricia's looking at me going, how the hell do you know <laughs> Fran Drescher? I didn't. I just played along with it. And I don't know who she uh, thought, you were. Thought, thought I was. But uh, yeah, that's that really that. funny. And there was that one time also at a restaurant, Lord walked in and was like glaring at me. And I think she thought I was Jack Antonoff for a minute. Bullshit. I told you. <laughs> but like, okay, I told you maybe that. for a split second. No, no, no. You don't think the guy who like produced her entire album and like wrote all those songs with her. It was dark. That would be like. It was, it was dark. She was like a few tables away. But yeah. the person I was with was like, dude, she keeps staring at you. That would and be like me seeing Jack Antonoff and thinking it's you. Like, but like I get, I get what like if you're at a restaurant, like at a dark place and like you probably like, is that him? I can't tell. Yeah. Maybe I'm making it up, but she was. Maybe I was, she was just trying to pull. Yeah, maybe. 
Maybe. <laughs> Should we I'll, introduce uh, our guest? Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? You've been on many, many times for the She's people who don't once. know. I have been on once. Really? <laughs> yeah, like two years ago. She was in, has it been that long? In the yeah. old set with the red background. Yeah. I, I hear well, that. Yeah, now they're all Ella fine, but... Priya, good to have you back. I thought we had you on like a couple months ago. No. no. Oh, she my. It's like 2018, 2019. 2020. 2020, yeah. sure. I was like, right before this podcast, I was like, do I need to like prepare like a big introduction for Ella Priya? <laughs> but um, I was like, no, I think the people already do know who you are. Ella Priya. Hello. What? <laughs> How, how, <laughs> how would you like me to introduce you? How about you give the people just your own little pitch of who you are? Um, okay. I am Mike and Matt's best friend. That's no, right. <laughs> <laughs> one of ours. One, one of the friends. No, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a close friend. But no, yeah, the first time I came on was 2020. Yeah. Yes. And that's when you were like David's new That's assistant. when I just started with David. Me and Mike had just started becoming closer because we already knew each other and I was, you know, it was very the beginning. It was my first podcast I actually ever did. It's oh, one of our most go. popular ones, I think so. I yeah, think so, it was right? great. I mean, yeah. I I loved doing it. But and then since then, yeah, we've been hanging out all the time. But and since that third pod, first podcast, a lot has definitely changed. Oh yeah. Um, I have had like three jobs since then, <laughs> and I'm currently now at my third, fourth, fifth. I don't even know. I'm doing a lot of different stuff now, but. You know, I have a new career as a DJ. I have my own agency. I'm doing my own social media stuff. It's great. Yeah, you're a jack of all trades. You're wearing a I'm lot a of hats. Jack of all trades. And it's, nothing but success comes your way. It's really. 4 p.m. and I'm be, I'm able to do a podcast. You know. <laughs> yeah, you're not stuck. At, For the uh, past year, I was at an office every single day. And so I would not have been able to do this. So I'm very grateful for that. And before this, you were the producer of the Views podcast. Yes, I was David Dobrik's executive producer of something. Then I was the <laughs> producer of Views, uh, worked with David. Then I worked at Dispo, uh, worked as a creative strategist slash social media slash manager slash whatever there. Then I worked freelance for two months. Then I worked at Allo as an experiential producer doing all their very events. And then now I am... CEO of myself. Do you have a name for your? Yes, own? I, ha I, I actually do. Yeah, I have an agency that we manage influencers and talent, but also work with brands. I also still do events. It's called Shala NYC. It is confusing that because every time I'm talking to people, they're like, oh, so you're based in New York. They'll send me like EST times for calls. I'm like, no, no, I'm PST. Oh, <laughs> the URL is NYC. Yeah. And uh, our emails are NYC and the website's NYC. But I'm like, well, we're a New York company. Yeah, you're my coastal. Yeah. My coastal, and also like the ethics of the company are New York. Yes, yes. We're not uh, doing But I also have had the actual domain and company name for quite a long time now. And then now that's what it's become. And Shala means like chill in Italian. It's like an Italian like, slang word that I always used to, I always still use as, as in Rome, especially. You're like, Shala, it's fine. It's uh, like chill, it's fine. And to do the same clickbait that we had on the last episode. Can you speak some Italian so I can put it as the cold open? Because that crushed. When I was at a I was at a party the other day, and Mike just starts like, just speak Italian, speak Italian. I was like, wow, this is fucking clown. It's great content. I was just like, can you speak Italian? And I filmed it because I had a funny, it wasn't that funny, but I was like, I'm going to film Ella speaking Italian on Instagram story and then put as the subtitle, or put as the caption, how can I turn subtitles on? on. <laughs> it, was, it was a silly joke, but... Tu devi imparare un po' di italiano così possiamo parlare. Yeah, you know what she just said. Uh, I'm so happy to be here doing this podcast. <laughs> no. no, I said you got to learn some Italian so then we can talk. Oh, maybe I'll do some Duolingo or Babbel. Como ti chiami? Well, yeah, como ti chiami? Como ti chiami? Which what is your, your name? name? Mm. Say it. Mi chiamo oh, Mike. Mi chiamo Mike. Di dove sei? Di dove sei? Sono di Roma. Di dove sei? Where are you from? America. <laughs> America. <laughs> uh, piacere. Piacere. <laughs> Jared Ma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, those are the only three phrases I really remem remember from. Those are good. Going to Italy. those are all, all, all you really need. Thanks, Ella. Um, but yeah, no, I honestly I feel like I'm losing my Italian, which is really sad. W what are you gonna do? I, I just realized that like when I speak to my friends, and granted, all, most of my friends who are Italian who live here in the U.S., obviously they speak English and. We speak in this like half English, half Italian, you know, kind of thing. Just because now for me, like if I have to talk about work, it's very hard for me to talk about it in Italian mm. because like so many words and like I, I don't really, you know, like the lingo or whatever you're talking about. It's hard for me to do in Italian. Yeah. But obviously, if I'm having like a casual conversation with my friends, it's very easy. But I realize now when I like text my group chats from like home, like of all my high school and college and friends from home, I'll like 
say I'll like put in English words which they understand obviously but I'm just like I shouldn't be doing this like I need to like have full sentences in Italian right is it a little exhausting like now this may be a stupid American question texting in Italian because you guys have the little accents over like your A's and your E's do you still gotta like press down and like well when you have your time? I'll like change my keyboard to Italian and then it just auto corrects it to the uh, to the thing you know what I mean like I'll write perché and then it will like just add the E with that because it knows that's what it needs okay you press a little world button on the bottom yeah mm -hmm. I got a lot of a lot of stuff on there well what's the best way? how do you think uh so by brushing it up do you think you need to be watching more italian movies talking to your friends more often i think i know genuinely like and i and you know greta who you guys know too i'm like we speak english almost all the time now and i'm like we gotta go back to like speaking italian when it's just me and you at least because like i need to I, i'm not talking it enough like when i lived in new york i had way more italian friends i like my ex-boyfriend was italian so i was like i was talking way more now that i've been in la for three years and i don't speak that much italian in person like i'll speak it via text or like voice notes and stuff to my friends but you gotta keep it up yeah and i, I like i had to we had like i had something work related with someone who was italian so i was like writing an email and i was like oh my fucking god i don't know how to write it i don't know how to be you like professional translate? no yeah. literally i was like, like your resume said you were proficient in italian <laughs> I was like how do you say this <laughs> well i've also never like because i learned italian obviously when i was a kid but i also learned it in like the like speaking mannerisms like i was always terrible at italian in school like at the grammar part of the reading part but i've been terrible at that in english as well so mm. that's just like not a skill of mine so i've never been good at like proficient like um professional italian or because yeah, i'm not good at in english either so when i have to be like professional or whatever i'm so bad at it like even this is such uh, this is probably fucked up to say but like someone who i knows uh, had someone pass away and I had to send the like text, you know, thinking about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I sent the text and I sent it to my friend. She goes, why did you say that? I said the weirdest thing ever. I was like, send I, I basically wanted to say sending you love, <laughs> but I said it in, I translated that in Italian in my head in a way that it didn't really make sense and sounded really weird. And I was like, oh, God damn it. Cause I was like trying to be like, you know, really sweet yeah, and nice, yeah. but I'm used to just be like, oh yeah, man, it's fine. I'm sorry. I don't know. And you sound like I want to make love to you or something <laughs> or, or just like, sorry, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> get, it just like, get just, well soon. I, I said the exact translation of like sending you love, like sending you lots of love, but in Italian, just like, that's not what people say. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's just weird. It's not always one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I just, I got to get it back up. So if you guys can both get on Duolingo, maybe, and then we can like. Do you have a very like Roma dialect? Yeah. So like so if someone was from like uh, Venice in Italy, they would know that you yeah. are from Rome. Yeah. Okay. And my friends all make fun of me because I have a stronger Roman accent than most of them. And it's not even my first language, but it's because again, when I learned Italian and I was seven, I learned it more from being with my, you know, when you're a kid, you just learn it from being around other kids. Yeah. So they all had like Roman accents. So I never learned it in the proper way of like from school. So I always have, I have a very like Roman accent when I speak Italian and people always tell me that. Like anytime I speak Italian to someone, they're like, oh, you're from Rome. Like, what yeah. What is Rome of, is it like the Southern accent? Is it the Boston accent? Is it rich? Is it posh? Like what is it? Is in it smoother? Italy? Is it punchier? I don't know. Probably more like, could you do the new york accent i would say oh, you know so what i mean not, so it's not the like, newscasters are not speaking with a roman dialect on, in italian news like what's the baseline in italy like in america you hear the we'll light be, back we'll after be. these messages and it's very like but that's not an accent that's i know it's English. very neutral yeah it's a neutral yeah, american yeah. roman is not neutral but not but all all italian accents when they are strong are act like a Milan, I, if I talk to someone, I know he's from Milan. If I talk to someone, I know he's from Sicily. I know, I know he's from Naples. Wow. It's very distinguished. That's like English sick. accents are like, sure, like I can tell when someone's Southern. Yeah. But I can't tell if they're from, I don't know, Oregon or something, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> like even a New York one, honestly, unless it's like an exaggerated one or like very prominent or almost the Italian version of a New York one, it's not that prominent. There's a really funny Fred Armisen clip where he go he actually goes around to each every single state and he he t explains what the accents are from each state. <laughs> so there's one. What was it? South Carolina. Uh, you, I, now you mentioned something about, about two, two pumpkins, pumpkins, but you're gonna give me how many? I, I just want to see what you did there. I, I think that is South Carolina. South Carolina. <laughs> Houston is a lot more accusatory. They're kind of like asking you. They kind of draw things oh. out a bit. 
I mean, it's like di- up, di- Dallas is more like up, heat. Upper West Side, medical condition. Medical. <laughs> it's, I, the, the, uh, San Francisco, this is a fact. <laughs> it's a really good video. But oh, like, I get that. Now, now that I've watched that, like, I try and hear in America because there's so many different accents yeah. in the U.S. I, I'm, see, I'm so bad at Amer- uh, accents it's here. It's probably tough. The only one I know is like that I can hear is Southern, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But like when people are like California, I don't, I don't fucking know. You all sound the same. Yeah. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. That's right. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I really wanted to try having better gut health. I wanted increased energy and I wanted to support my immune system. I also was hating taking all the pills and vitamins, and I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning before I go and work out, and it makes me feel unstoppable. I feel like a whole new man, and I cannot describe how beneficial this new Matt King has been lately, all because of AG1 by Athletic Greens. And Athletic Greens truly is our favorite nutritional drink. It it supports the immune system, and it's part of our daily routine, which just makes it so much easier. And we can't recommend it enough. Because I'm trying to get that summer bod. I'm trying to keep up with all the amazing bodies the Vlog Squad has been producing lately. And Matt King needs to get on that grind. And AG1 has been my new secret ingredient to making me the best of my athletic ability. And I was thinking, why take a bunch of different things when I can just mix one scoop in water once a day? And AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to do a whole lot. And AG1 is truly an incredible product. It's so much more than some of the other greens that you'll see. Every scoop has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole foods sourced ingredients that are super high quality. It tastes great. It makes you feel great. It's healthy for you. Uh, We truly just cannot recommend AG1 enough. And you notice the results. You get more energy. Your skin looks better. Your hair feels better. You have more energy. It, it truly is a wonderful, wonderful product. And we love getting it delivered every month. It arrives at our door. It's always an exciting day when the new AG1 pack shows up. And uh, yeah, just gets you ready for the next day. And it's great knowing that with AG1, we're taking care of our bodies every single day. So if you're looking for an easy way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five travel packs with your first purchase just go to athleticgreens.com slash hoot that is athleticgreens.com slash hoot check it out you see you kind of have a new york accent and sometimes your british sneaks in your a's hoff yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's the only reason why people are like what the hell are you saying because <laughs> my british accent comes out when i say a words yeah and then i don't i personally don't think i have like an accent as if I don't speak in, like, you know what I mean? And people be like, oh, I can hear you're Italian. I'm like, no, you can't. No, that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. No. Or they'll be like, I can hear the Indian. I'm like, no, you can't. I'm not talking like this. <laughs> you you, just, you sound that. eclectic, though. You sound like you, There's like, dipped your there. toes yeah, yeah, yeah. in, like, a lot of different places. There's definitely some. I have some DJ questions. Okay. Okay. Oh, did you mention that, that you do professional DJ stuff? I don't know if you mentioned that in your list of things. You have yeah, I kind of yes. mentioned it. Okay. I mentioned it. But I also want to preface, I'm still a beginner. Um, yeah, but you're getting good gigs. You're yeah, playing no, real parties. You're getting the dance floor moving. I'm good. No, no, for sure. I just like, I get scared. I don't want people to think that I, you know, I'm like. Dude, I, you're one of the best DJs like out right now. I've been to parties. Thank you. What are you nervous about? Are you nervous about pleasing the crowd? Are you nervous well, about so, your own mix? Are you nervous about a DJ listening going, who is this? More so like that. It's, so like, I'm not because when like the parties that I've done or the events that I've done have always been like. Uh, the thing that I pride myself in is I know how to get people to dance. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I know the songs people are gonna like. Like I, and that's if you talk to any DJ, it's like ninety percent of it is knowing how to read a crowd. Like if a song is not vibing, you switch it. What's a crowd saver? Like or what's a vibe? Fi- Fergalicious. Ooh yeah, that gets oh, the people it, it going. It gets people going. Fergalicious or like depending on the crowd, if it's like lots of females, like super bass by Ooh, Nicki Minaj. Yeah, super. Yeah. You know, or and like the thing is, I also mostly play because I one enjoy it, and two, it's the best music to dance to, like older, older songs, like '90s, 2000s. Like I've, I'll put in some newer stuff, just like the ones that everyone knows, but I'm not necessarily playing like the top. Like I'm playing top hits, but like old top hits. You know what I mean? Are you ever? Oh no, the other one that I always play that's a which is always great is um every time we touch. 
Oh, oh, that's such a good one. And every time we touch, yeah, I and that's like that. Fucking guess. Hundred Gex did a boiler room set, and that's what they ended it with. And it was so, they did like a hundred Gex version. No way. Dude, the hundred Gex boiler room set is so sick. Sorry so, to interrupt. No, it's a, it's a mean, great song. Yeah. Do you take requests or no? Because I know I will. I'm like sometimes I think just respect the DJ. <laughs> it, this is not a bar mitzvah. It we're not we're not at like a DJ banquet thing or. I think there's it certain times it depends just, on the party this dj worked on their set they worked on mixing all the songs let them just play what they had in mind for the party yeah instead it's just it's certain moments where like i don't know patricia loves going like up and asking them and i'm just like let the dj pick <laughs> the songs, i think it depends babe. on the venue like if the dj is hired and their like name is on the flyer and it's their set Mm, that's not the vibe. Okay, but yeah. Right. If you're at, you know. If I'm like DJ my friend's birthday party and they're like, yeah, can you play this? Like yeah. A work event or something. You <laughs> know, and... For me, it's more so like, I have like a lot of songs, obviously, but I don't have the fucking Rolodex of the Spotify right. on my USB. So a lot of times people will ask and I'm like, I don't have it. And they'll be like, come on. I'm like, no, no. Like, I'm not saying no to you. Like, I don't have it on my USB. <laughs> yeah. So I can't play it. But they don't believe you. They think that you're saying no. I'm like, oh, if I have it, I'll play it or whatever. You know, because the songs I mean? have to be. On your USB in your program, you can't just yeah. play it off Spotify. No, and mix it into your mix. No, but you've gotten better at the mixing stuff too. That, that well, was... that's the part that I was saying because, like, I definitely think I have like the song selection down. I have the like reading the crowd down. I have the like dancing, whatnot. I have slightly like matching BPM, so like not going from like a really fast song to a really slow song. Like I have that down. But yeah, the har hardest part about DJing is the transitions, is the mixing. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. I talked to like a couple of my friends who are like really good DJs and the, the feedback that they've given me is like you play the song for too long. Like I almost have it go to the end of the song before I switch it. One, because it's easier. Which I do love. Yeah, that's I the thing. do that's love. That's the most annoying thing when a DJ plays an amazing but song But that's for what one I second. love too because when I'm uh, I'm listening, I'm like, I want to continue to sing the song to the end because I know every single word. Yes. Play the full thing of 212. You <laughs> yeah, know? Exactly. I want to hear it go all the way through. But that is like most like, and you don't have to play the full song. Obviously, like there are songs that are like four minutes long. Like obviously, I'm gonna yeah. cut can, that can short. Can you play Bohemian Rhapsody? <laughs> when I hear Bohemian Rhapsody, man, yeah. I, 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 that's when I go to the bathroom. Or like get, go to the bar and get the drink. Yeah, I, I, can't I got time. Do that song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's the part, and that's what I've just been practicing. And it's one of those things. Like the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, but like, we, you guys, you, did you come to the I Like You party we just did in LA? Yeah. Yeah, you guys were both oh, yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was a great one. Like, to me, that was a great party because, one, we've been to that bar many times. Bar list, right? Yeah. Yeah. And nev no one's dancing as much as they were that night, in no. my opinion. Yeah. Hmm. Like, normally people are, like, standing outside. They're sitting at the bar. Like, everyone was on the dance floor. And, like, everyone was having a great time, which is, like, all we want out of these parties. I remember when you did the underground one, Jordan's, yeah. like, circus party. That was, like, never seen so many people dancing. And you were the, I think you were the first set of the night. Yeah. Yeah. And then after Ella left, like there was three DJs and the dance floor was empty for the next three DJs. Like Ella, and it was not, it was like maybe only 10 of us. And yeah. Like 300 other people. Yeah, that's, that's when true. I noticed. I was like, damn, this girl, you actually, <laughs> you're not just like, oh, I'm going to play my favorite songs. Like yeah. you actually have the skill to read the crowd and play. But so room. that's, but so when we did the I Like You party too, like it was great. And I saw, I opened because again, the other two DJs were Isaac, who I do the parties with, who's like a really good DJ, like literally the like one of my favorites ever. And he just is so good at reading a crowd, so good at mixing everything. And then our other friend, Madison, who's also an amazing, he's like Amine's tour DJ. So like, you know, legit, like he's playing in front of thousands and thousands of people in stadiums. And I was like, for something that I was so nervous because I'm like, people are going to notice when I go <laughs> off and these people start. And like Madison went after me and Madison is really good at mixing that he does the thing where he like changes a song after like 30 seconds, but in a really cool way that you're like, uh, oh shit, you know what yeah. I mean? And clearly I wasn't doing that. So there, in my head, and I know some people notice, and I think it's because now that I do it, I notice it when I'm at a party that I think everyone else notices it. Do yeah. other DJs like have to take note of like the DJs before them if they play a song? They're like, yeah. oh shit, I gotta like make sure I had that one on my list. Yeah. I don't need to like replay that song. Yeah, I mean, again. depending what it is and like how long you're paying it for it, yeah. And that's why I think it's funny because like when we do our parties, we all, like me and Isaac play like similar music because we also just love the, the same stuff. So like I'll hear her play a, him play a song or he'll play, hear me playing a song and be like, oh fuck, I was gonna play that, like whatever. But again, the way that I've learned how to DJ and this isn't necessarily right but like i don't prepare a set at all oh, i'll prepare really? no oh, like wow. i'll prepare like a call it a playlist but none of that is in 
is in the order that I'm going to play it in. Oh. Like, I just have, like, say, of my 600 songs, I put, okay, I'm going to put 100 into this playlist, and these are the songs I'm going to play tonight because I think these will be good. But I don't put them in, like, okay, this is going to be first, this is going to be second, this is going to be third. Because that's how you don't read a crowd. Oh, right, but do you have to, like, right. match up, like, BPMs yeah. at all? Like, yeah, but you it? can see that on the thing when oh, you're doing okay. it. okay. So, I know. Should we learn to DJ? <laughs> I'm down, man. Experience. Watch out that You're going to have DJ parties? <laughs> It'll just be all zoobity <laughs> <laughs> Um But yeah, no. And, and I, I learned that from like my friends who do that. And that's what, because I've seen people who have sets. And well, a lot of people also just have pre-recorded sets. Oh, yeah. The whole thing is just all yeah. right. The, all the, it's all and they just up. pretend to do shit. Yeah. Which is insane to me, one. But two, that's also like, how you show that you're not not because you're not good but like if a song sucks and no one's dancing you can't do anything about yeah, it you're yeah because like you guys gotta wait till it goes to the next yeah like ashley simpson on snl when she remember she was lip syncing i saw that live did you mm -hmm. what like in person or on tv i saw it uh not like yeah i saw it on tv oh live. i thought you were like at snl wait no. she she was li i don't know this she did uh, ashley simpson jessica simpson's yeah. sister yeah, which she was you know on her like big stride of the, her song pieces of me mm -hmm. she went on snl yeah and uh you know this on a monday i'm mm, waiting yeah, yeah. on tuesday she was up there and then the song started and she wasn't ready to like start singing it and, and but, then she but started... her voice her voice was like doing it and it was just so clear this is before people like understood that musicians are playing with backing traps and lip syncing yeah 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 and then she just started to do like a silly dance a little hoedown like while the song and then playing. i don't even think she like continued the performance like it just yeah like, they ended. just like, went to commercial it like ended her career yeah it wasn't the same oh i didn't know that yeah i mean i feel like people always get called out for lip syncing I feel like nowadays people just know, like, you, cause they just make it obvious, uh, Frank Ocean specifically. You can't talk about that. Right. So there's a new bully in town. <laughs> Are you talking about Elle's dad? Yeah, Elle's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is getting bullied by my dad so hard. It's unbelievable. I'm, like, sore from where he, like, pinches me and hits me. <laughs> he physically abuses you? Yeah. Oh he mostly like, physically sizes me up because he catches me, like, working out at David's house. He's yeah. like, oh, getting in shape for the uh, the wedding. Huh? He... Yeah, he just. I but don't he know. just, it's just like, you know, like my love to you is bullying. And like, so his is like times that. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's, I like, definitely get it from him. Cause he's like, pretty I strong feel... too. So like, he actually can like beat me up and he lets me know he can. I know, but like, I. What's up, bud? I'm like, okay, ow. <laughs> I know. I think he doesn't realize how much it actually hurts you and how fragile you are. I'm really fragile. I'm Ex such a baby. Explain what he's been doing at David's house. But I, love he's... I love him. I love him. We love Michael. You're just we scared he's going to come for you yeah. after this. Um, yeah, so my dad, who lives in London, um, he came to visit me like a month or two ago for the first time, in a, here in LA at least. And, you know, obviously I took him around and took him to David's and he met everyone. And while they're at the house, you know, David's doing a lot of renovations to his house. And my dad has an interior design and furniture business in London and has also like a lot of experience with redoing houses. He's built houses. He's redone them inside. It's not just interiors. And while he was there, David, there's some contractor there or something or they were talking about my Dave was my dad basically like, told Dave like, this is wrong. Like, I don't know what you're doing. You're getting ripped off. And that David was like, what? what are you talking about? <laughs> and so he helped him with something literally just on the spot there. And in typical David style, he was like, can you just like come out here and help me with my house? Like kind of what he did to me when I moved out. And so my dad went back to London and then they kind of asked about it again. And my dad was like, well, is he serious? And I was like, yeah, I think he's serious. If you want to come out. So he did. He's now been here for like a month and he hangs out with all of you guys more than me. Comes to the pool parties. <laughs> he's everywhere. He's been doing a great job with all the renovations yeah. at David's house. It's so he's incredible. been here for a month. He's redone everything. He's helped him redo the floors. He's helped him redo the outside bar, the pickleball court, like all these things that I think they just needed to be done. And, you know, it's a house of 25 year olds who would maybe not have that experience. Like, not that I do either, but yeah. it's hard. Like, you know, and I see it too. You know, if someone showed me a quote for like redoing the floors, I'd be like, I don't know. Is that how much floors cost? Yeah. I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, but luckily he does know. So he can be like, no, that's bullshit, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So he's just been helping him with the house stuff, which has been great. You know, I think David's got a lot done since he's been here, but it's definitely interesting to have my dad here i feel like he's much happier being here too oh he's he loves it look i met him when he was here visiting yeah. originally and he was like you know still kind of getting used to it meeting the people but now he's like yeah he's like one of the boys he's no just... he calls me up he's like oh did you hear what happened today at the house i'm like no i didn't why do you know <laughs> he's like, oh, i met matt today he like knows everyone now he's at david's like every... well he's at david's every day because he's working he pushed me in the pool and my pool party fully clothed he did do that he did do <laughs> that matt when i told matt that he's like what what 
because like, like Matt's dad is like nice guy from the south, like real polite, <laughs> and he's like, "Who is this guy who's like pushing you in the pool?" And now it all makes sense. But yeah, he's like yeah. he's very cool. But your dad's from London, but he also like went to school out here in the states, right? Yeah, which is uh, not this is an insane story too. But so yeah, my dad is originally from India, has lived in the UK for like thirty years or whatever. But before that, he went to college in the U.S. and he lived in New York for a really long time, which I think is also the reason why I was always infatuated by it. Um, but he went to Scranton, random. But Scranton, Scranton, Pennsylvania, or Scranton, New York, Scranton, it? Pennsylvania. Oh wow! Um, Shout out to under- University, <laughs> University of Scranton. And when my dad, since he's been here, we have now found out that, which is again, I this world is so small and it freaks me out. But one of my friends, McLean, who you guys know, yeah who I've been friends with now in LA for like two plus years. And has a great company. Yes, and she has an online business, Vivacious. So She's always Vivacious. out with you, Taylor, yeah, I mean, like, and I Jess. I see her every week. I yeah. talk to her like almost every day. Like we're close. We're really good friends. Good friends. So we're at dinner with my dad and my dad's asking McLean like questions. Like, oh, so where are you from? Whatever. McLean's like, oh, I'm from where she's from, upstate New York. I was like, oh, I know that. And she's like, oh, really? Like, not a lot of people know that place. He goes, yeah. And he asks, what's your last name? She says, Farrell. He goes, oh, I know a uh, Mike Farrell. She goes, that's my uncle. And she and he was like, really? And and then my, my dad just starts naming off her grandfather, her father, her grandma, her whole family. And we were all like, wait a second. What? How do you know these people? And my dad's like, he was my college roommate. Whoa. We were best friends. And me and McLean had no idea. My dad has been on McLean's family vacation that they go on every year. Before McLean was even born. Before McLean was even born. My dad kn- knew McLean's grandparents more than she knew them. Like, knew everything about this family. This is bananas. And now, like, 30 I, years later... We randomly are just... friends in Los Angeles. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I they, I mean, it's... I know that I've already heard this story, <laughs> but, no, like, hearing insane. it again, I just can't believe the odds of that. Like, there's I, photos of, like, no, that's uncle I, from I the love 80s. the story, too, because it's not, like... Oh, they went to college together. No, they have pictures together. My dad went on vacation with them. My dad pulled out all these photos. And then the best part was, um, obviously, we had to, like, call McLean's uncle and whatnot. And so my dad's like, we got to FaceTime them. We got to FaceTime them. So we FaceTime. We FaceTime her uncle. And they respond. And, like, my dad's and she's like, oh, I have someone here who wants to, like, say hi. And they pan and they're like... I kind of look at her for a second and then the wife goes, is that Mike D'Souza? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. And they're like, I haven't seen you since my wedding. My dad was in their wedding. What? And like had not oh. seen him since. And then of course, it's amazing now because now they've reconnected and have been talking. Oh, and they're like, now. They're now friends. Yeah. Wow. I mean, like, you know, you lose touch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they live in upstate New York. He lives in London. Yeah. And now they've been chit-chatting and like friends again, which that's is crazy. Like a generation later, just making it all happen. Yeah. Who knows that could happen to us and our kids one day. I know. Just linking up through that way. Damn, that's, I, I love that when the universe just like pulls people together. So mm-hmm. insane. And to me, it's even more insane because we're not talking like, I don't know, two people who grew up in New York or whatever. Like we're talking like. Random small town. You know, random college, random small town. Like, I didn't meet McLean because of something connected to that. I met her randomly here in L.A. through another friend. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Like, if I'm, if my kids or if my, if someone in, like, Rome was like, oh, I know your mom. I'm like, eh, whatever. You know, yeah, you know right. she lives in Rome. She's a teacher. <laughs> you figure it out. Yeah. This is, like, crazy. Yeah. Small world. I love that stuff. It truly is. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Talk Space. You know, sometimes life can get you down. Uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult. Everyone has their challenges, but talking to a therapist can help. And if you're not sure how to get started, Talkspace has made it easy to find a therapist that you will like. It's convenient to meet online, at home, or wherever you're most comfortable. And Talkspace has made a huge difference in so many lives. Now, you may be a person who thinks seeing a therapist or a psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them, or hey, even afford them. Well, we recommend trying Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. Sometimes people wait until something bad happens to talk to a therapist, but why wait? You can get a therapist right now through Talkspace, and therapy can really help you shift your perspective and find tools to cope in difficult times. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or set up childcare in order to attend sessions. It's mental health care made easy. 
And Talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist so you don't have to wait until your next session. Talkspace can help with any specific challenges you might be facing. It is the number one online therapy platform with licensed therapists in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationship issues, and much more. Talkspace is secure and private using the latest end-to-end -end bank grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. Talkspace is affordable and in network with most major insurers. So as a listener of this podcast, Hoot and a Half, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash HH to match with a licensed therapist today. Once again, go to Talkspace.com slash HH to get $100 off your first month and to show your support of the show. That's Talkspace.com slash HH. Wait, can we play uh, our famous 10 questions game? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so we're going to play a game that we've been playing with our, our guests as of the most more recent episodes. This is, okay. you know, you're you're an OG original guest, so this didn't exist. It's basically just 10 questions. Okay. You can take as long as you want, answer okay. as quickly as you want, whatever. Okay. I'll just ask and you answer. So okay. uh, the first one is, what is your favorite word? Fuck. <laughs> is that your favorite word? Or no, you're no, thinking no, no, no. about what your favorite word is. <laughs> My favorite so. fuck. No, 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 it's not fuck. Um, my, it could be in Italian, could be in English. Your my first favorite word guess, I think. is, I mean, kind of fuck. Fuck is your fuck? favorite word? It's just so satisfying to say. Yeah, it really is. You, you get know the what fuck, I mean? You get the uh, like, you fuck. get the uh. it, it, does, it doesn't have to be negative, it doesn't have to be positive. Yeah, that's true. I think it's one of the most versatile English words, too. Yeah, Un the way it's spelled, yeah. the way you can add it into everything. Yeah. Yeah, right, I'm going to go with that. The next question is, what is your least favorite word? Oh, I don't want least favorite word. My least favorite word is definitely because I cannot spell it. Ah, yes. I've never been able to spell it. Even like autocorrect, it like no. won't even like, you, like I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, this is close to it. Can you just suggest? It thinks I'm saying de de the other, defiantly, defiantly or, or something. Definitively. Yeah, yes. something like that. Definitely. That hate that word. Immediately also. I can never get immediately right. In restaurant. And receipt. Fuck receipt. Receipt. Oh, oh yeah and what, wetness day wednesday wetness day just come on man yeah or february is how it's you yeah, know definitely is the one that fucks me up every single time definitely i don't know how to spell Do the next one can tell you next question is what turns you on who this could be spiritually creatively sexually doesn't need to be one specific thing i mean this is so basic but like deep conversation because mm. if for all of those things i think that answers it like if i'm able to have a conversation with someone one-on-one -on -one and we're like actually talking about something of substance right that turns me on sexually that turns me on creatively and it turns me on spiritually and it makes a night just like matter like oh. a day like if like i'm a in a having a shitty night or like not having that much fun but i have one conversation with one person yeah my nights uh, i'm much happier yeah that's the best party favor you know? yeah yeah <laughs> Walking away with a great conversation. Yeah. Uh, next question is, what turns you off? I have this answer, but it, uh, this isn't the answer because it, this sounds so, like, hated. But it's men. It. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> men? Men? A recent, Are we okay. confirming the rumors right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. Uh, no, what turns me off is um, rudeness and um, obnoxiousness. Mm -hmm. That's a word. Yeah. And I, I bring that to men just because in the past like month, I've had multiple interactions with different men in a business scenario and in like a normal scenario. scenario. And I'm just like, it's this con like I had, I had a meeting recently and it was like a lunch meeting and we, he, the check came and I was not asked one question. I sat at lunch with this person for an hour and a half and the check came and he was like, oh, so like, what about you? Meaning like he was doing all of the talking. Ella was keeping the conversation alive. Oh. Asking all the whole time. It was just this guy word vomiting on Ella for yeah. like an hour and a half. Oh. And then the check comes and goes, so what are you up to? Yeah. That is the worst. But like, again, aside from that, like, yeah, the things that turn me off, you have rudeness and obnoxious. Like if, if you're ever... rude to a waiter, again, what we just talked about, if you're rude to a bouncer, like, I'm just like, ew. Yeah, if that is. Think, and that goes hand in hand with obnoxious because you think that you're someone and you yeah. think that yeah. you're like, eh, ugh, turn off. 
so if I'm ever in a situation like that where the other person will refuse to ask me a question and like you feel this urge to like ask and fill the silence, I've learned to just sit there and just no, I started doing that too. I yes, I make it awkward, make them be yep. like. Uh, uh, a- anyway, so like you have to break that pattern. I've started people, doing that. Yeah. I've, I'll be on Facetime for four minutes in silence, waiting for them to say something. Or I, I get really frustrated how long someone will choose to like continue to talk about something. Yeah, like, like I'm and, over it. And sometimes when it comes to you and you're answering something, I like to keep things, you know, short. I'm thinking about how much time I'm taking up yes. talking yes and then i'll sometimes be listening to someone for over like four minutes and they're still going on and on and on and then right when he comes back to you and you want to talk they're like all right i gotta go or like they're not that interested in what you have to say you're like yeah i just listened to you talk for this long literally yeah when people don't like reciprocate like how much time they're giving yeah. to other people mm. that drives me crazy yeah but I like the quote, the way to be interesting is to be interested. Right. Yes. Yeah. Which Absolutely. is why I think people like the three of us, because we are very good at asking people questions and making yeah. them comfortable and letting the conversation flow. Definitely. And this is why we like each other, because we are yeah, exactly. at listening to other people. Like, for example, yesterday, Ella just called me oh, and was yeah. like, can I vent? And I was like, for sure. We talked for like 15, 20 minutes, vented, and then today something happened to me. I was like, can I vent? <laughs> Called her up and she just listened. And it was like, because, yeah. you, you know, you have that type of relationship where you can just, yeah. you know, the other person. And actually. we recently had the conversation, too, about like, when someone needs to vent, you don't necessarily have to give them advice. No, not oh, at all. Yeah. But, you know, like when people will like, oh, I'll play devil's app. I'm like, no, no. As my friend or as whoever, like, I just need you to listen. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And you can be like, yeah, I'm sorry. That sucks, man. Like, I hate when sometimes you just want to talk and they're like, well, what are you, but did you do this? I'm like, yeah, fuck like, up. That's yeah. not what I'm here for. Yeah. I just need you to listen to me. Here, no. let me draft up an email for you to send. Yeah, like, literally. Not what I asked for. It's like, well, how, what, what do you think they thought? I'm like, I, I, no, they're wrong. I'm right. Just leave it at that. What's the next question? What sound or noise do you love? That's really hard. What makes noise? I don't know. It, it could be satisfying. It can be like. A pleasing or soothing sound. It can come from nature, something mechanical. A friend. Like, I love the sound of like fake nails, like rubbing together. Oh, I kind of do love that too. That's one of my fake or favorite. I like that one. Um, I like um... the sound of water boiling before pasta is dumped <laughs> in. <laughs> no. <laughs> I hate that sound. <laughs> um, I mean, probably like the ocean. Uh, like I can actually no, now I have it. There we go. Fire. Oh, little snap, crackle, and pop. Yeah. Like when I when there's wood logs yeah. starting to crackle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picking up the fire. Love yeah, that sound. I I think I like that sound, but then I immediately associate that with you're gonna just smell like smoke. Yes, and then oh. you have to do your laundry, and you can't sit yeah. in like your. I just yeah yeah. I get mm. that. I always got to think when there's a fire. I'm like, where else am I going tonight? So I just don't smell like smoke. If it's the most, if it's the last thing I do in an evening, I love hanging around. Something else fire. I love is just like the sound of a saxophone. Oh, saxophone! Yes. Yeah, hmm. it's just like I feel like I'm in like a jazz club, like a like, smooth, a smooth saxophone. Smooth saxophone. I get in moods where I start looking at saxophones online, <laughs> <laughs> where I'm like, can I just like have this in my own home to make this sound? But no, I, I definitely like. Don't. If there's a song or like someone's performing and suddenly there's a saxophone, it's ten times better. Oh, yeah. I'm all about I that. I think it depends. Some saxophones I'm I kind of over, like when it's screaming, like... No, 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 no. It's okay. Think of like mellow jazz. Yeah, that's when it's nice and restrained. I think it's best. I love a good like 80s like... Uh, like a Bruce Springsteen uh, sound? Yes. Uh, I'm kind of over it. Oh, man, I love that sound. <laughs> okay, what sound or noise do you hate? The sound of my fucking... You know when you like uh, the vent in bathrooms? Yeah, like the fan? Yes. I hate oh. like I have two lights in my bathroom and when you turn on one it's just a light when you turn on the other it's like a light in the vent and like when pe- I never turn it on because I hate the noise of it when people come to my house and they turn it on I'm literally like turn it off is Why? it too squeaky it. is it like does it's it need to be so, looped up it's, it's so loud but it's one of those things where it's like what is it it's loud it's like air it's like <sighs> you might have like dust in it or something maybe you need to just clean it out it shouldn't be that loud sometimes to it's, me, it's kind of satisfactory like I love knowing I don't like bathrooms that don't have one well, in, in like, public places, it's fine because it's like muffling your pee noise or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but in my own home, I, I don't like it. But that... I love then, a bathroom with a window. That's the best. If you have a bathroom with a window, you're yeah, set. Yeah, right yeah. you definitely need a window. That was just this very specific one, but it's really annoying me recently. Uh, what is your favorite curse word? Let's do your, your Italian favorite. 
because yeah. let's hear the Italian fa- okay. so let's do your favorite Italian or maybe like curse phrase I'm trying to think what I say the most because like honestly like vaffanculo is not my favorite one it's too long what is that vaffanculo is fuck what up uh, that's how you say fuck in italian yeah it's vaffanculo basically like, it's like va- 16 vaffanculos <laughs> well it's like go fuck yourself basically uh, vaffanculo. Oh. okay um oh, but i love saying well probably cazzo or porca droia cazzo is basically like dick cazzo yeah so but we say cazzo like shit okay you know what i mean when you're like oh shit you're like cazzo Okay. Uh-huh. And it's like C A Z Z O. Great spelling. Yeah. Um, and then Porcatroia is like. Sounds like a great Italian spot. <laughs> well, because Porca means like. Mm, I won't say dirty. Like, Porca is basically like. Yeah, like, kind of dirty. Trashy. <laughs> I'm trying to think how you translate this. Filthy. Rotten. Well, no. Porca and Porca is like. It, it, you connect it like a pig. So like yes, it's like dirty, filthy, whatever, and okay. then Troya is slut. So it's like a, it's like like a, a, a naughty, a naughty pig. So it's like dirty slut, basically. Oh wow! But that's not how we use it. When would you like? Use I'll it? like drop something like parka troya. Mm. It's just like an exclamation. Just like an exclamation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Parka troya, of um, course. So, yeah. This one. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Ooh so many i don't know if, what my profession is well i've always wanted like when i was a kid i wanted to be a pop star and i still kind of want to be one didn't we all yeah so i think a that. pop star yeah okay have you played around with that headset tiktok Just filter that's course. popular yeah yeah. i love it <laughs> a pop star or um just recently i was like thinking about a career that i really was interested in fuck Deep sea marine biology? No, I was never interested in that. I did kind of want to be like, um, like a build things. Like a architect or no, a contractor? No, no like S- just Sims. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just <laughs> magically kind of make things. If, a Minecraft no, person? Like, Lego? No, no, no. Like maybe like a designer, I guess. For Not what? necessarily clothes, but like of anything. I don't know. Like I see the people on TikTok, like. We're making like ceramics or making like clothes, yeah. like shit like that. And I'm like to make something. A craftsman. Craftsmanship. Yeah. Yes. Me too. Last question. Oh, should I already ten? If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You did good. You did good. You got so. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I, I want to feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Well you, done. You nailed you, it, sister. You nailed it. You nailed it. Yeah. You did a good life. Welcome. Go have an ice cream. Cool. Well. Is that it? That Anything it. else? No, that was it? I think so. All right, cool. When are you going to the Bahamas again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully soon. Isn't it like every two weeks? Well, no, there are other places now. It's not always the Bahamas. So oh, do you have your eyes set on somewhere else? Um, No, I don't know. Wherever, wherever mommy wants to take us. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like... I'm like so excited for this summer. Like everyone's like hot girl summer. I'm like I feel like I'm gone. I'm gone all of August. the whole summer. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I'm saying no to so many people's parties that are happening in LA. Dude. I'm yeah, just like then ne- I have a bachelorette next weekend. You would have thought next weekend is the only weekend in the world. I have four birthdays that I'm missing because of this bachelorette party, which like I'm so excited to go to. And also like bachelorette's been like planned for six months. Yeah. And now I'm getting like birthday party text, birthday party text, uh, friggin' event, prime event, all this stuff. I'm like, how are them to me? I'll go. I'll go. Going? <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a lot of weddings and bachelorette parties this summer. Where's the bachelor party? Bachelorette the party at? Bachelorette party is in Rehoboth, Delaware. What was what? that? Delaware. Rehoboth. Rehoboth Beach. It sounds like you're speaking Spain, Spanish. Rehoboth. No, because well, all my girlfriends are like all on the East Coast, mm. and um, we've gone to Rehoboth before, and it's really fun beach town it's n- near it's not too far and yeah because we all, we've gone to the jersey shore a lot i just go to brigantine been to atlantic city went to all these random places but yes yeah, so the bachelorette is there which i i love like for me it's complicated to get to because i have to like fly to new york and do all that but for them it's so easy yeah and i respect when people make their bachelorettes not like you have to buy a thousand dollar fly and then you have to do this and you have to do that right and it's like you know we're going to the maldives so. yeah <laughs> like, okay. and of our friend group like lots of them have gotten married in the past year so they know that like us you know singles are like gosh 
<laughs> you know? Yeah. They really do spread me thin here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't uh, have that d double income. Yeah, exactly. Don't have that double income. No. Well, Ella, thank you so much for coming on. It was great having you back. And honestly, come back more often. I love it. Thank yeah, you so much for great. having me. We don't need to wait another two years to have you I back. I know. I hope not. You're well, always welcome here on Because usually a lot of times on this pod, we'll do people that we don't see that frequently. Yeah. Because it's like a nice way to connect with people. But we literally talk to Ella like every day. So it <laughs> feels like she's been on. But I we'll make it more it. of an effort. Basically, every conversation of ours is like a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. We need you like you and Taylor on as like a pair and get some hot tea from just you two Hell yeah. as well. Spilling the tea? Spilling the tea with Tay. Okay. Well, where can the people find you? You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, um, Spotify, Snapchat, all at Ella Priya. There we go. There we go. Thank, Thank you, Ella Priya. Thank you, guys. Toodles.